Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wednesday Call Live, filmed in beautiful Burlington, North Carolina, in front of a live studio audience. Now, let's hear from our host, our president and CEO, Andy O'Brien. Y'all sit down. Never has there been a better time to be alive in America than right now and inside the Alliance, baby. Woo, it's never been like this. It's never been like this, and I got proof. And I got proof. I'm going to show you proof here. I got proof. I got proof. Every Wednesday, we get everybody together, and we broadcast this to kind of keep people in line. You with me? Like figure out what's happening. And some people tune in. They don't have to. It's no requirements. But you can figure out what's going on. And you can keep your mind right. Keep your business right. Keep going in the right direction. Okay? And so um, today we're going to talk about why people fail building and selling. Why do builders and producers fail? That's what we're going to talk about. Why do builders and producers fail? Did y'all did get printouts that you, you were, we were able to hand you um, in the back? You got them back there? Um, you can also pull it up on, if you don't have a printout, we can put, matter of fact, we ought to get the people in here a printout if, we, if we're able to. But y'all should be able to bring these printouts. But you can see it on band. You can pull it up on band and look at it. and take, if you t Here's what you do. You take it, pull it up on band, take a picture of it, and then you can draw on it and take notes. Mm -hmm, that's right. High tech, high tech. <laughs> Um, the book that I'm going to talk about out of this is Questioning Your Way to Recruiting Success or Questioning Your Way to Sales Success, okay? So I want to talk about that, but I got proof to say it's never, ever been this good, okay? So, well, let me, let me, let me, let me take you, Terry. We, um, we've got all kinds of leaderboards, and I try to decide which one will be the most instantaneous to show you success. I think what I'll do is, I said, if you'll just issue pay $30,000, issue pay, not submit, $30,000, I'll give you an extra $1,000 to meet me somewhere. Where did I say to meet me? Orlando. Yeah, or Lakeland, right? It's one of those places. Meet me in Lakeland, I'll give you $1,000. If you, and I'll take you out to dinner. And then everybody around can come in for training the next day. So we'll go down to the hot spot. You show up. I'll give you $1,000. The next day we'll do training for anybody who wants to come in for miles away. You can fly in if you want to, or you can drive in. It don't matter to me. And then um, if you wrote 20000 or more, I think this is what I said, I'll take you out to dinner that night, and the people that wrote 30000 or more take you out to dinner. And then the next day we'll do something fun together, and I'll pay for it. Does that make something, something cool? Ride, ride um race cars or shoot machine guns or um, do something, jump out of a plane, something crazy, you know, <laughs> something fun we'll remember to do together. If we, you know, if you don't, you always don't have to do what we do if you don't, but I, okay, I think my cousin, he just jumped out of skin when I told him we are going to do that. All right, let, let's pull up the fanatic, can we pull up some of the leaderboards? I'm looking for the fanatic ones that, that you write over. It's January fanatics. See if you can find that one. I can tell you who they are. Um, we had six, this is what I was going to tell you, it's never been a better time. We had six, that's not the same as, yeah it is, mine's just colored a little bit differently. We had six people, let's see if I can move that up. Look, I like magic. Okay, these people are all going to get $1,000 when they come rolling in. Did he write 100000 in a month? Yes, he did. That's what I call proof. <laughs> if you're brand new, you're thinking, how much money did he make? A bunch. Now, the way this works, Annette, a lot of people think if they sell a little case, they get, like, their commission. But what you, when you do a big case, you don't get all your commission. They reduce the commission. No, it's the same commission. So if you're making, if you're on, say, 
70% and you make a thousand dollar sale, you get 70%. But if you do a hundred thousand and you own 70%, you get 70% of a hundred thousand. You see what I'm saying? Way to go. I'm good friends with this guy, Brandon and Bill. <laughs> Me and him and Ashley are good friends. We're tight. Um, I'm quite good acquaintance with Brandon Swindell and Jell Swindell. 83,000 in a month. Come on, Jell. <laughs> you know, what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> I'm so excited. What's your name? Darren. Darren? Yeah. You excited as I am? <laughs> yeah, you ain't excited as I am. <laughs> My boy, Joy Dukes, 53,000. Wow. See, here's what, here's, here's, what, here's what broke people thinking. He's already got a lot of money. Why is he in another thousand? See, that's how come you didn't do that much business. Because you don't understand one more. My boy was thinking one more. You was thinking take a break. My boy was thinking one more. You understand what I'm saying. Cameron, 38,000. Megan Wood just started the business. Just got her insurance license. Just a couple of months ago got her insurance license. This is proof right here. Robert Sarge Wilson. Y'all ever seen in the movies when they have a tank and it's going through Germany or through some country and them army men are squatted down behind it like that right there? Here goes Sarge out front of the tank. <laughs> what he said, he leads the tank into battle. Mm -hmm. Jan Miller. She drive like a race car driver right through New Jersey. I know, because I read with her. That's how I got this thing in my finger right there holding into the... She does not waste time getting from one appointment to the other. Jan Miller. People say, how come there ain't no more girls up at the top? I said, I can't fix that. <laughs> I can't get up there. Y'all going to have to do it. Some girl going to have to do it. Okay? Jan Miller did it for you. Katrina wasn't far off. Jeremy wasn't far off. These people just missed a thousand dollars. Look, like that. Just missed a thousand dollars. Come on in anyway, Jeremy. I ain't gonna give you a thousand dollars, but it'd be good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I take you to dinner. Look at this. To dinner. To dinner. To dinner. To dinner. Everybody's invited. Way to go, Tim Sight. Big Monk, buddy. Way to go. Hutchinson, Yankees, um, Alleman, Mike and Michelle, Katrina, Timothy, Mark Hutchinson, Jonathan, Maggie, Merlene, Felix. Way to go, Merlene. Come on down. James and Jane, I saw Jane back in the back there. Um, Ed Stein, way to go, Ed Stein. Marcus Richardson, Shannon Barnhart, Paul and Rachel Van Thoff, Ethan Dewar, and Doug Becker and Lee Reyes. Ooh, this is Swindell's daddy. Check this out. One out, 20,000. Boom, wow. out. Um, so 20,000 is a cutoff, but you got to have a minimum of five apps. Does that make sense? He said, why not, why not just one out? We ain't going to do, the, do the giveaway with just one. But, but congratulations, for real. Um, a nerve profile. Woohoo! You look at these numbers. This is what I call proof right there, Terry Edwards. 19,000 right there. This is what I call proof, people. What, this year is a, is a year of validation. This year is a day, the year of driven. This year is a, is a year of uno mas. You with me on this? Okay. Now, um, I am doing this contest. I am sponsoring it, okay? And so um, I'm going to do it again in January. Same deal, and I'm inviting you somewhere. Where are we going on a second trip? Does it say on there where we're going on a second trip? Uh, Lakeland. We're going somewhere. Detroit. That's right. So the next group, we're going to do Detroit. Yeah, February. So you run 30000 in February. We're going to go to Detroit. And the dates are on, um, the dates for both of these are on band. I know that, where we're going to go. Okay, so let's go to a different proof. That's, I mean, y'all okay on that proof? Does that blow your mind? I remember when I first started doing this 20 years ago, and they started prancing them proofs across, mm -hmm. and I about jumped out of my skin. I was like, if them donuts can do it, this donut can do it. You with me? Okay. All right. I saw a couple girlfriends and wives punching when that went on. Where am I going? E easy, 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 easy. I think I want to go to the Foresters thing 
that you, what do you call that one? That's where they give $1,000 if you do 30000 and $500 if you do 20000 just foresters. No, not that one. There's another one that foresters does. It was a giveaway. Victor, that's it right there. That's it right there. January 2, okay. So here's the deal here. If you did 30000 with just one carrier, Foresters, they would give you $1,000 if you did over 30000 If you did over $20,000, they are going to give away $500. So you could make $1,000 from me and them. So you could make a $2,000, up to a $2,000 bonus in these two. Extra money on top of all of the money you're getting. Okay, so Joe Dukes got that. He knocked out 25000 with just Foresters, and he did other business too. Obviously, he was over there um, in the, was he in the 30000 So he did 30000 together, so he made 1000 for me and 500 from Foresters. Y'all understand, it's like y'all ever do that betting stuff, you know, where you have, you're betting on this number and you're betting on it. You can make money different ways. Make sense? Um, but this ain't a bet. This is guaranteed. Shannon, Shannon Barnhart. Um, made another $500 way to go. Shannon, she is on fire. Just missing it, Mark Hutchinson, Robert Wilson, Merlene Felix, Jeremiko Edwards, and Tim Sight, and Mike and Noel Levin-Tovich. Just missed, okay? So this, this is going to crank up again in February also. Y'all with me? So if, it's just extra money, if you can use extra money, okay? All right, um, let's think of what next. There's contests. There, is there any? Oh, let's do that drag race, the other Foresters one. I love this contest. Um, last year, we did an all-expense paid trip to Toronto. The carriers are like, they don't want to come to Toronto. I said, dude, we love Toronto, and it's where your headquarters are, where Foresters is. And we went to a basketball game. We went out to the ridiculous restaurant. We hung out in a bar afterwards in this um, ridiculous hotel. What's the name of that hotel? Was it a... Was it a Fairmont? Another Fairmont? The Castle? Um, and so we're going to do it again. And it's just a 90-day contest. And we're taking, um, I think there's 20, 20 veterans. I'm looking for that. Let's, let's see who's went. 20 veterans. But watch this. There's 20 veterans and 10 pros. The pros are people that were hired in 2018. Before 2018, they're veterans. Rookies are 2019 or this year, right? So rookie, rookie. So there's three different levels in this contest. It's 20 spots for veterans, but if a rookie beats you and you're a veteran, it becomes 19 spots. So you got to beat all the veterans and, or else we give more spots to the rookies. So here's what I want to tell you. There's only five spots for rookies, only five, but watch this. One rookie's winning, two, three, four, five. So there's your five rookies. But the rookies can move up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rookies. Ten people that hired in 2019 are going to go on this trip unless a veteran picks up the pace or a 2018 pro picks up the pace. Now, for pros, there is ten spots. Ten spots. But the rookies have pushed all the pros out. And one pro has moved all the way up here. DJ Jennings, hired in 2018, part of Jane Hill's team. Surprising she's on her team, right? She's screaming. <laughs> um, and, 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 hey, is that, is that Stephanie? Uh, my question, is that Stephanie from the Tampa area? Or is that a different Stephanie? That's her? My buddy Stephanie! <laughs> You don't let up. You will have so much fun. I mean, she's just fighting. She's just, all kinds of stuff's happened in her life. And she's just a fighter, scratcher, scrapper. And apparently a producer. Is that crazy talk right there? So, so exciting. Jake and Varey just got started, won the trip last year, had just got in the business and won this trip. And they're back on track to win it again. Randy Berry, is, that is, um, I think I know who Randy is. I'm not even sure if I know. There's so many new people, I don't know if I know them. Annette Ivy, is that you, Annette? Woohoo! Do your hands like this. Do your hands like this. Do your hands like this. That way they know it's you. Y'all get the video. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep going. Woo! 
Lower it down. Lower that camera a little bit more. There you go. There you go. Stand up. Just go ahead and stand up to help us out. Woo! That is crazy talk. Oh my gosh. This is proof. This is proof right here. Eric Claymeyer, Brandon and Jennifer Buell's team, they brand new agency managers. Y'all remember them at the convention? Then got somebody on the leaderboard, Eric. Um, then another rookie is Benetta Mitchell, part of Riddle's team. Um, Bertha, look at this name. I'm going to tell you what, Bo, she got 72 letters in her name right there, man. <laughs> Bertha, Paredes, Hernandez, I think that's a husband-wife team. So Bertha and Hernandez, congratulations, part of Mike Hartlieb's team. Brittany Flores, another rookie. And then the other rookies, Barry Spates, Fred Butler, Patricia Martin, and Tanisha Ross, and Nick. Don't, I'm telling you, this trip was unbelievable. It we had so much fun. I think we're going to get rent a suite at the Blue Jays, Toronto Blue Jays professional baseball team, and we'll have all the food and all the drinks and all the laughing you can handle, dude. Oh, they had free popcorn last time we was up there. <laughs> God, pre-packed. You, you didn't even have to put your hand in that scoop. It's already in the bags. Christian Cameron. Woohoo! Way to go, Gerald. All right. Um, Eric and Lisa Drudge yeah. on fire. How do you say that last name? Sarah Pulis? Pools? Pools? Sarah Pools? She's on um, Olga and Jason. Sarah Pools is showing up. Look at the veterans. Danny Johnson, my boy. Me and, me and Danny, y'all might not know this. Me and Danny go back about 27 years. We've been buddies. Took me 13 years trying to recruit him, just stayed on him, stayed on him, stayed on him. And now look at him up here, Bo. Went in all expense paid trips all around the world, going to Alaska together. I'm so glad my buddy came on board. Lord. My boy Junior Correa, one of my wife's best friends right there, Debbie Ben. Look at this. Is that real? Is that Andrew Peters? Is that Andrew? That's Andrew right there. Verified. <laughs> Stay focused, Andrew. Stay focused. <laughs> Mike and Michelle Alleman, no surprise. Minerve Profile, no surprise. Angela Manzo, no surprise. Jonathan, Megan Yakey, Paul and Sam Menachino, Paul and Rachel Vanthal. They buddies, too. Them two couples right there, they big buddies. There goes Stephanie again, DJ. I'm so proud of DJ. All the way in Alaska. No leads. Counties are 50,000 miles wide. He's driving all over, door knocking, whatever he's got to do. This is, we eventually got him leads, but it took months and months to figure out what was going on in Alaska. And um, he, is, he is such a stud. Mike and Noel Levin-Tovich, no surprise. This Mike going out just printing money. Tim Sype, my boy Sype, Sype, go with me on this trip, buddy. I'm not kidding you, man. You will love it. We will have such a good time. Um, Jeremico Edwards, gosh. I like if. Can we just stop the contest and we take the people that we got right here? This is good people. This is good people. If this group won, if this group won, if this group won, it's a 90-day contest. So there's 60 more days, but if this group won, I'd be happy. Not to say those of you that ain't in it, I'm mad at you or nothing. Merlene Felix. Merlene, you will love this. Robert Wilson, Mark Hutchinson, Shannon, Joe Dukes. Look at Joe. Joe messing people up this year, both. Just this is the year of Joe Dukes. Joseph Duke. Joseph Duke. Don't you call him Joseph. 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 Okay. That's a 90-day contest. Everybody stay calm, stay focused, <laughs> keep your mind in the game, right? The game's not over yet. TikTok, we got 11 more months. Do y'all believe how fast that one month flew by? Yeah. Good thing I started preparing y'all in December. I said January's coming. Remember I said that? And it came, didn't it? It came and went. Boom. <laughs> Same thing with February. You turn around, it's going to be gone. You got to get you better to do it now or right now. There's your two options. Hey, look at here. <laughs> I want you to take a little close look at that right there. Let's see. Yeah, I want you to hold it. I want you to hold it. These watches were manufactured 
the year that we manufactured the Alliance. The year that we started it, 2002, is when these watches were constructed. And they're in mint condition. And we're going to give away at least 13 of them. This, is, this one might be my favorite right here. I, I think, I think, I might be wrong, but I think half the budget for all 13 went into this one. I might be wrong about that. Let me see that one. I don't, we got to find out which one that is because that one's gorgeous too. That one looks like oyster pearl back, backing. Anyway, pass it. So we're running a contest. We're going to give away 13 of those scot-free on top of all the commissions, on stop, top of all the bonuses we're giving away, on a top of a trip to Thailand, we're going to give it away to the producers. With me? And we ain't going to do it based on age, sex, color, eyeball size, nothing. Does that make sense? If you went in wide-eyed people, you can win. If you went in squinty-eyed, look like you done stole something, you can win it. You with me? If you, hey, look, if you cross-eyed like I am by half the time, you win. Like that. You with me? Let's check out the Rolex and let's see who, if we stopped it right now, who would take home the 13 Rolexes. Shocking that that one's titled Rolex. Here we go. Surprisingly, Brandon and Ashley Bill, my Ooh. dead buddy, um, Brant Swindale. So the way this works, we lay all 13 out, and number one gets to walk up there and pick which one ever they want, and then there's 12 left. And the 12 left, Brant would get to pick. Okay, I thought that was one of the most funnest things at the um, at the awards when it was between what who, who was it between um, Hutchinson and Shannon and Jail and Brant, right? And then we called out Swindale got his name hauled out, but 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 Brant got the choice of watches. That was I was like that's fair, you know, <laughs> you know. So um, Brant, you, you know, you did good number two last time, but I, I'd, I'd catch him, I'd pass him. Um, Joe Dukes right up there at the top. I know he'd love to have one of those watches. Megan Wood, Sarge, Jan, Jeremy, Mike and Michelle, Katrina, Carrie and Mike Williams. You know they'd like to have one in Rolexes. Tim Sipe, that'd look, look, Rolex, Rolex, Sipe, that'd look good on you. Mark Hutchinson, Jonathan Megan Yake, just missing. Merlene Felix, Jane and James, Paul, Marcus, Shannon, Paul, Rachel. But I'm telling you, Ethan Doerr's in contention. Um, he's brand new. Lee Reyes, William Sw Bill Swindale. This is Swindale's dad, Minerva. So there's your top 25 right there. And uh, but any, it's anybody's game. Anybody could come alive and just start just start working all week, you know, and, and crank it up. Is there any others that I need 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 to go over? Um, oh, let's look at the. There's a recruiting contest in July. We're gonna wait, give away ten thousand dollars. See if you can find that recruiting one, the one that y'all doctored on a little bit. Um, yeah, let's see. Personal direct recruits. Yeah. All right, so this right here is personal direct recruits. So how many people you hired? Not if you hire a guy and he hires somebody, that's depth. It's you hired. So right now, Andy Riddle would get $10,000. He told me that I might as well write the check out with his name on it. He told me that when I first announced it. He, if anybody, he's talking trash. Now, I want to let, let you know that this is Stephen Handy that's right there. Steve, you might all give him a give him a muscle. Stand up, give him, stand up, give us, stand up, give us a little of this right here. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Matter of fact, turn around for the camera. For me. Turn around for the camera and give it this right here. Yeah, turn around, turn around. Where's he need to turn? Where's he need to go to? Go this way. Go this way. Go this way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's too much time right there. He, he ain't won nothing. Janina Wilson? Is that who that is? Known as a personal producer writing agent, is up in the top standings in the recruiting agent side. If I remember correctly, the next time we show this, Tia, let's, let's put some dollars over here. I think we know them, but that would look cool if it had 10000 uh, 5000 2500 then I think it goes $1,000. It goes $1,000. She'll make no difference after that. As long as you're in the top 25, you get $1,000 cash all the way down to him. Now, the difference between him and him is $500. You with me? Because when the next 25, 26 through 50, get $500 cash for personal direct recruiting. So let's, that's a lot of people. Let me, oh, we only got it down to, we only 
we only got it down to 31, but that's fine. All right, so you can look at those names. Look at those names. It's going to change because these are ones. One, look, look, look. One person. See, handy. That's what I'm telling you. That's why I fight so hard for one more recruit. You saw me. I, I've been doing some recruiting in front of them. And you just wouldn't believe how hard I fight and fight. And by the way, any of those we recruited, Will, we need it. Hopefully they're watching the show. I fight to get one more person. Why? Because that one more person could take you from way down here. Look at this. Look what one gets you. You with me? One gets you, one gets you here. One more gets you here. You see the difference? And that's just in a little silly contest. But when it comes to hierarchy building, Jeanette, um, Annette, when it comes to hierarchy building, it changed your life. Like one Stephen Davies, one Andy Riddle, one Paul Roberts, one Alex Fitzgerald, one. See, those are one people. Those one people, you just don't know which one they are. That's why I fight so hard. And if I think they're good, I lose my mind. Calling them, texting them, sending stuff, flying to see them. Because that one could be the one. And the one could lead you to one. You, I'm not kidding. It, it, you've got to get that concept down. Uh, I'll do the top ten for you. Marty and, 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 Marty and Deanna um, Doge, um, Lou Abadi, Dr. Martha Batorsky, Jerry and Cassie Burbage, um, Terry and Tia Edwards, Jason Tony Carey, Janina Wilson, Stephen Handy, Kyle and Charlene Cater, and Ende Rittal. Okay. Now, do you have the um, number of sign-ups for agency managers coming to the event? You do? Okay, yeah. Do you have that? Okay. All right. Now, what this is going to work look like, let's see. You going to do it for me? All right. What this is going to look like, I'll take it from here. I'll take it from here. Thank you, boss. All right, so watch this. Our base shop has 78 people coming in July, but that's going to be broke down. Handy's going to get 10 of them. Uh, Will's got 10 of them because my base has several different people that work for me. Okay, so I'm going to fall out of the number one spot. Diane Lampy. These are not all hers. This is in her base. So what I'm telling you is I don't have the leaderboard. And by the way, these don't count until they show up. So first you recruit them, then you sell them on family reunion, give them the dates on their calendar, and then you get their butt here. Number one person with the most new people here gets $10,000. And everybody's in this contest. Number two gets five thousand. Number two gets twenty five hundred. Then a thousand dollars, all the way down to twenty five people, just for getting people to the family reunion to change their mind and light them up. Okay, and then five hundred down to fifty. So this is a massive recruiting wit and get them to convention. Wit and by the way, the depth counts when getting them here. So there's one contest is just wit, and the other one is wit and depth with new people. Y'all understand that? Okay, so that's that one I had to talk about. Um, is there anything else I got to? I don't think so. Power of ten. By the way, Andy Riddle this month had two, four. He had four new people get the power of ten in his base. Four in his. This is proof. Four in his base get to ten. Um, James, huh? I do, definitely should do that one. I'll do F and G study group, get that one right. Um, get that one ready. James and Jane Hill had two people in their base get the power of 10. Jay Turner had two people get there. Stephen Davies had two. Michael and Angie Owens had two. And Diane Lambie had two. And there's a bunch of people that had one person get the power of 10 is when you get a brand new person started, get them to write 10 policies fast as possible. The sooner you can get them to get 10, the more chance they're going to be big in this business. If they're slow getting to 10, they're probably going to be slow getting to a multi million. So get them, get them fast. Get them started fast. So this is a big deal. But yeah, F and G study group. How long is that? That's a long running contest, but we'll still do it. Top twelve producers for F and G. Right now, if we stop the contest, Marvin Otsoy under Osuna has written eight F and G. Olga and Jason's five. Chris Baldwin has written four. Marilyn Martin Ward three. Chris and Courtney Long three. Douglas Becker three. Michael Fear. I don't know that name. Fear Holly. We're going to have to get to know him under um, Chris and Courtney Long. James and Jane Hill, way to go, Jane. Um, Jordan Beatty, Bryant Sutton, Adrian Claxton, and Jim Ruppel. That's the 12 that I would be paying for your hotel, taking you out to dinner, and some other cool stuff. Everybody is going to be invited to the study group. It's at, and it'll be at the Don Cesar on the ocean in um, St. Petersburg, where, our, where we live now. Okay, it's... 
It's not on the island, but it's in St. Petersburg. We're, we live on the island. We have to come off the island to see y'all at Don Cesar. Oh, oh, oh. If, and if Jane don't change her mind, well, she, she's allowed to. <laughs> We're going to have a dinner and a party at our house on the beach. Mm. On, the Gulf, on the Gulf of Mexico, see sunset. Oh, my gosh. I hope she's, she said it, but she can change her mind. And y'all are supposed to act like it's a good idea if she changed her mind. You're like, oh, we didn't really want to go anywhere. You know, don't. <laughs> I'm going to end right there. I, could, I, told, I was telling Bright, uh, Jeff Bright, I said I could talk the whole time about these leaderboards. Um, oh, the only one I want to pull up is my travel dates. Can you do that one? There's a bunch more. I think I got all of them that I wanted to cover. And then we got to get to this, this how to, why do people fail. Yeah, I'm going to be in Lakeland. Um, it's, oh, that's a long ways off, but plan on it. Lakeland, um, March 4th and 5th. So March, I show the plan. 5th, it's when I was all day intensive training. Then I'm going to be in Detroit, the 25th and 26th of March. And I'm going to be in Houston. The 15th and 16th, show the plan at night, all day training, and then I'll be back in Burlington doing the same thing, show the plan, and then all day training, okay? All right, let's go to the slides that I'm going to teach on. This, this is a bunch of stuff that I hope to help you. I really hope to change your life with it. Um, it's right out of this book. I think they're going to have some of these books available if you want to get a hold of them. This is the greatest book I've ever read on recruiting. It's the greatest book I've ever read on sales because it's all about questions. She was taking a picture. You got what you need? Okay, um, all right. Questions help you engage with the right people. Okay, optimum word is right, okay? All right, let's see if I can get this going. All right, let's, um, get, let's go to the next page. Any reason I shouldn't be able to write on it, Billy? Okay, here we go. All right, all right, here's what people do, Terry. They limit their energies to people that are in their comfort zone. People that they think they like. I like that person. Okay? Um, now, now here's, here's the first thing. This is how they fail when they're working. The first challenge I see is people working or not. I call it this. I say, now, was you scared of money or was you scared of working? Are you allergic to money or are you allergic to work? Because there's some lazy people out there. I'm going to tell you. I some of them some good friends of mine, you know. I like them, you know. And um, and there's other people just don't want to make money for some reason. They think it's bad. They they think they 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 don't they don't get it. They don't see what you can do for it. They don't see the 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 movement of it. You with me? All right. So once we get them working, once we get people working. So this is for the ones of you that are working. This is not for the psychological. Um, it's not a psych I do meetings sometimes that I psychologically try to keep people, trick them into working. This is not that seminar. This is a seminar for the people that can trick themselves or one of my earlier tricks worked and you started working. Does that make sense? So for the workers, here's how they screw it up. They limit it to people they're comfortable with. All right? So people like, like I, I, you, got, you got a black guy, only works with black guys. And his age, he's 40, he wants to recruit him 40, right? It's 27-year-old white guy, he don't like him. I'm like, bro, what's wrong with him? Well, I don't know, I'm just not sure if he's, he's serious or what. Same thing with the white. You got the white guy, only works with white guys. You with me? Chinese only work with China. you with me? Women only want to work with women. Men only, it's, 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 people like people that are like them, so they're attracted to them, and they get stuck there. Does that make sense? That ain't the way. You football coach, you can't hire based on who you like, you got to hire based on productivity. You tricking with me? All right. Spending most of the time with prospects and customers that are closest to the decision. You're looking for people that can do it. Like, for example, you talk to a linebacker that's looking like he might ready to hit somebody, that's close to a decision. Does that make sense? No, you don't recruit a linebacker because you like him and because he likes you. He'll do anything I say. Will he hit somebody? No, he ain't going to hit nobody. He might love on them, but he ain't going to hit them. Like, that's not what we're looking for in a linebacker. We're looking for a hitter. Does that make sense? You're looking for somebody that's about ready to go off. Does that make sense? Like Debbie Ben. You talk to Debbie Ben, she walks up, you're like, she can go off any minute. You with me? Robert Wilson, he can go off any minute. You with me? Terry Edwards. I met, met Terry. 
I was like, this joke's going off right now. He just, he just, he was just wide slam open. First time I met him. You looking for people that are ready to make a decision. You looking for a guy getting ready to pull the gun out. Does that make sense? You are not looking for people. Did you see when I was recruiting? I heard that cough in the background. Bam! You with me? I ain't listening to all that. They got, they sick. They can catch the flu or something with them. I can't understand what it says. I say, hey, what'd you say? Speak up. Didn't I? That's it. Speak up. I can't hear what you, I can't understand what you're saying. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. I bet. I don't think you're going to like this business. How many times I say that? I don't think you're going to like this business. Because I could tell. And they might have looked just like me, act just like me, except for one thing. They want ready. Does that make sense? You're looking for people that are ready. Is that right? My uncle said, no, I can't say what I'm saying. Woo! That was the close one. Woo! I'll tell you later if you ask me, but woo! I can't say that on TV. What you're typically looking for is people that are, are now, it depends. I'm looking for people that cray cray. But a lot of, for a lot of people, you're looking for people that are out of your comfort zone. Does that make sense? Like, you recruit Swindell. And he's about 18 inches taller than you is right off the bat. You know what I mean? You know what I guess right here. I ain't going to tell this joker to get in the business. He's taller than I am. No. No, you can't teach tall. You know, guy comes in tall, let him be tall. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not like, kidding. People out of your comfort zone that might be stranger than you, crazier than you, more psycho than you, and don't try to change them. Let them be cray cray, okay? All right. At, uh, uh, a lot of times, um, oh, here's another thing people do. They spend all the time with the people that are already with them. The wife, the pre- I asked one guy. And he know, he'll know what I'm talking about. But don't tell nobody I'm talking about you because they won't know if you don't say nothing. I talked to him in the first of the year, and here's his team. You know, he had 16 people, right? He had about three wide, 16 people. At the end of the year, I was talking to him. I said, what have you been doing? He ain't putting in no more width. He said, I was working on my depth. I said, you had 16 people before, and you got 16 people now. But he had closer relationship with them. We ain't trying to get relationships, boss. We... Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to get premium. <laughs> you done got confused what game we was in. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. He was in a relationship game. I'm in a premium game. That's what see when you the people you like, that's when you're going for the relationship game. Does that make sense? Now to be clear, once I get ten or twelve producers, then I pick the one I like the most. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's why I said if we just ended this contest right here, y'all could go, because y'all are the producers and I like y'all a lot. Does that make sense? But when you mix in producers with losers, I got a propensity to winners. Does that make sense? Yeah. People say, you like him? I says he produces. They go, yes, I like him a lot. How about you? <laughs> Not kidding. And then he said, well, what about the non-producer? I said, oh, yeah, take him or leave him. I ain't trying to get emotional about it. I'm not going to engage with you because I don't care. I don't care. I ain't doing nothing. One guy told me to quit. I said, good thing you told me. <laughs> Because if I'd have just looked at you, you'd look like the same as last week. <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> you, can't, you can't go from doing nothing to doing nothing. There's no, you can't do less than nothing. You know? I quit. Oh, okay. Thanks. Text somebody and let them know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he might be a big hunter. Might be a big basketball fan. Oh, they don't care. You got a premium, baby. Does that make sense? They waste their time talking to people they're comfortable with. Y'all know, salespeople know this too. They'll go in and talk for three hours, somebody not get a check. Producers say, we can get a checkbook around here somewhere? <laughs> we got to get us a check. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to go away from here. Right. I got looking to watch. I got to get, does that make sense? Producers, y'all agree with producers? You agree with me on that? You don't make every sale, but you don't waste a lot of time with the ones that ain't about ready to read a check. You find somebody about ready to read, read a check, and then we stick that to them like glue. Make sense? Do I need to slow this down? I get to talking fast. People don't. I don't say all the words. People. I think everybody speaks Union Ridge redneck. Sound good to me. And ain't just redneck. That's a special form of redneck. That's Union Ridge redneck. When we find somebody ready to write a check, then we stick with them. But if they not ready to write a check, we are getting ready to go away from here. Get up and get out. Make like a horse poop and hit the road. All right. Um, oh, and that, at that point, see now, watch this. When you got producers, 
you with me? When you got people that are good, you know, about crazy, about, about ready to make some money, the only thing left is your questions. By the way, that's how I figure out if they're even in that point. So there's questions to sift them, and then there's questions to get them going. Like here's a, here's a question you don't want to ask a loser. You don't want to be like, hey, Bo, you scared of money? You're scared of work. But if you've got 10 producers, and you say, hey, Bo, you scared of money? You're scared of work. 20 appointments, 25 appointments a week. And then start recruiting and get on the phone calling people. But if you're telling the wrong person that question, you're wasting your time. So it's sifting through by asking, hey, so what kind of questions are you asking? I say things like, um, y'all married? Is it just you? You taking care of yourself? Or how's it, you know, how's it, how's it set up for you? Like how much money? Would, I want to help you about, this is my interview process. Like when I'm interviewing for recruiting, I'm asking like, now you taking care of a bunch of people? Just you? You got mom and daddy on the payroll? You got a sister on the dole? You know what I mean on dole? Just, you know, like a, just giving them money, you know? I'm trying to figure out how much money they, make, they need. You with me? And if they say something like, um, you know, ain't nobody but me. I'm just trying to get rich. Ding, ding, ding. If they go, really, I got a low budget. I'm a low maintenance person. Bo, I'm going to tell you what. It's all I can do not to hit the hang up button. You say, you ain't like that, are you? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I deal with a football coach at NC State. I send them a picture of a kid, and they'll say, yeah, I, I, there's what they say. Yeah, I know him, no thanks. Just like I know him, no thanks. <laughs> they don't say, let me talk to him, see if I like him, see if he likes NC State. They go, I know him, I know thanks. Does that make sense? Like, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You tell them their stats, and they go, nope, don't make much. Just, nope. Like, like they don't care. They do care, but they don't care. Do you see how does that makes sense? And then and, and if, they, if they are potential, they'll say, tell them to come on in, and then ask them questions like, um, so what's your goals for the future? What do you want to do with us? Once you put on that Wolfpack jersey, what you going to do? You going to hit somebody? You said you got to ask emotional questions, right? What's your daddy? Who you playing for? You playing for your daddy, your mama, your uncle? Who you playing for? The guy's like, I'm playing for Jesus. You know, you go, Ooh, and my mama, then we want him. But not if he ain't in the category. Does that make sense? So sorting is huge. All right. Let's do, um, like, give, me a, give me a white sheet of paper where I can draw something, Billy. Please, let's do that. Can we do that? Is he standing? Is he out there listening to me? Oh no. Um, there we go. All right. Questions to help people engage. There are two aspects that one must consider before asking such questions. You must identify the right people, and then you go into a conversation with them. In a, interviewing them is how you go into a conversation. I've got, I've, got a, um, I've got a criteria right here. I've got it on my phone. And here's what I'm looking for, but I got, about got it memorized, okay? Um, I say stuff to them like, you know, I say stuff to them like uh, we believe in eternity because we think, I'll, I'll just be talking to them because we think that the afterwards, afterworld is where everything is. And if they make a comment like, yeah, you can save it up for heaven. Or if they say, yeah, I want to hear well done. You see what I'm saying? I'm listening if they're this person. If they don't react at all, this is the believer part. If they're a believer. I just, I tend, believers are crazy. You know what I'm saying? They believe in something they ain't never seen, and they'll die for it. They believe in something they ain't never seen, and they'll die for it. They something else. You wouldn't say that. You say they like you ain't one of them. Well, if they over here and I'm over here. But I'm with them, but I'm a believer. Does that make sense? But, but you say, well, somebody that ain't a believer, I, yeah, yeah. You can, you can play football if you're short, but it's unlikely. Does that make sense? It can happen. It can happen. I'm not against it. I'm an odds player. I always back the odds on the crap table. I always split them when they're nines. And I'm, I play the odds. If y'all don't know, I'm not, I'm not, there's a book, the way you gamble and you play the odds. You can't win a game. You're going to lose, but you can lose slower if you follow the book. <laughs> I'm not kidding, okay? You know what I mean? Some people win. Um, all these things, I'm, I'm listening to their age, when they graduated from high school, if they graduated from college, if they were a Marine, it, 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 you with me? And the way they talk. Mm -hmm. Snap, snap, snap. I'm, good, I'm, I'm judging. And I spend less time with ones I don't think are worth it. Does that make sense? Here, here's, here's the way it looks. This is you, and this is me. Okay? And there's a bunch of people right here. And we're talking to them. Okay? Now, what it don't have is loser, 
winner, loser, 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 winner. You with me? It don't have that on them, okay? Now, I believe, I honestly believe sometimes I can smell it on them. I'll be like, I smell something, Whoo, and it ain't good. You with me? But I can, when I'm talking to them and asking for the question, we're going to play a three-man basketball. you the coach, and I'm a coach. i got to pick three, and you got to pick three. And we're going to play basketball. Which three are you picking? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you, you should pick the winners. But not people, just because they look like you and act like you, you shouldn't pick them like that. Like, you could call this a non-discriminatory talk. You with me? Non-discrimination. Or you could call this, we're the most discriminating people in the world. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. goes both ways, don't it? Because if you start not inviting losers, you are a discriminator. Does that make sense? Or if you pick a certain group of people and don't invite them, then you're a discriminator, right? Yeah, but if we say, but we don't care anything about who they are, where they come from, but the fact that they're a winner. So what you do is you got to discern quickly because, see, you have limited time on earth, limited time to recruit. That's why I think I recruit more. I think I do more because I, I get rid of, and if you're a good inspector, like you're a fruit inspector, you all know what a fruit inspector is? You're like, that apple ain't go good. Oh, no, I think that's too much. Dude, eat the apple or throw the apple away. Okay. Too much talking. Does that make sense? Yeah. But if you're on an assembly line and you're like, good apple, bad apple, bad apple, bad apple, bad apple, good apple, bad apple, bad apple. You see, you, you can't sit there and look at everyone that has to stop the machinery belt. So in one hour, I can say, speed this belt up. Come on now. I'm kicking them both. There you go. I'm just picking them like that. Does that make sense? You said, well, you might miss some good ones going like you go. You're right. I might miss some good ones. But it's been my experience there's more bad ones than there is good ones. So that's why I move quick. And I'm trying to get quicker. And I'm trying to get my people to understand how to recognize them quick and let's move. And then if they're good, let's, let's bear down on them. You with me? Let's take that good one over there and hold them and try to watch them close. You with me? And, and it's really what I'm looking for is a worker. Sometimes you get these pretty boys, you know, they won't work. Some pretty boys will work, but a lot of them, they just try to be pretty. You with me? That's like you want to get a fight with a, with a pretty boy. You don't want to get a fight with a boy got a scar right there and a knot right there and two stitches. Don't mess with that fool. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh. You follow what I'm saying? He, don't mess with that one because he ain't scared to hit the face. I saw, Mac was trying to get me to watch some movie, and this guy was like, let's fight. Where's one rule? No hitting in the face. I was like, somebody getting ready to get a butt whooping. Right. He's going to punch everybody, every, everybody butt the face. He's going to be beat. You know what I mean? No hitting in the face. That's a crazy rule. And my brother said that one time. I slapped the snot out of him right there. <laughs> he said, no, I did an open hand, you know. I remember that. I was standing out in the front yard. I get my daddy wore my butt out for it. But he said, no hitting in the face. I just popped him. <laughs> just to start the fight. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? Like, like you, you're looking at these people, and we run these ads, ZipRecruiter, Indeed, Monster, and it's just crazy number of people hate their job. We had 1,000 responses last week, and then we load them into this text tool I got. I put 45 of us, hey, you still looking? Bing, ding, ding, ding. I just look at it. I try to pick them by the name of Chappelle. I think about high chaparral. I'm calling that one right there. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I try to guess them based on what it, I'm not kidding. Everybody look at it now. I said, I can't read that one. I ain't calling him. <laughs> and then when I was like, I said, I'm going to call him anyway. I said, what's your name? He said, call me Mo. I said, yeah, I can live with that Mo. <laughs> I couldn't understand what it was, you know. I said, so you're going to change your name. You ain't going to be getting nobody's house. I can tell you that right now. That's the first thing. I'm going to tell you ahead of time. You go to Rednecks where you live in Tennessee. You come up around that name, mm-mm. They've been called the cops, the DEA, the security, FBI. <laughs> and if he says, well, I'm not changing my name, I'd say, well, you got you to wait for Terry to call you because I'm not going to hire you. Does that mean, you know, you with me? I'm bolder when I think I got, you know, when I, I'm bolder. Does that make sense? I got numbers of people to talk to. So, like, if I'm talking to a Uber driver, I say, hey, Bo, look here. You going to retire Uber? He said, I like it a lot. I might retire doing this. I ain't talking to him. He said, oh, hell oh, no, I'm not retiring at Uber. Are you crazy? That's the craziest thing I ever heard. I said, no, I got crazier stuff coming out right next. Here's the next thing. How would you like to print some money? I just asked him. How would you like to print some money? You with me? We can knock off people's debt. You get rid of $40,000 debt, we'll give you $1,800 commission. You like me to do something? I know people. Do. In other words, I'm, do you, I'm sorting. Mm -hmm. Y'all tracking with me on this? Okay, questions to help you engage the right people. 
Let's go back to my slides. I think we'd be on number three. You must identify the right people. You must get into a conversation with them. Um, next. Uno mas. Ultra. There are two aspects one must consider without asking questions. You must identify the right people. So people hear me asking questions. They think that I'm just randomly asking questions. I'm sorting. I'm trying to figure out. And for somebody will say something, my, if you listen to me recruit, I'll be like, that doesn't add up. Could you help me understand? Like one guy, he said um, he moved from Michigan to be with his parents. I said, do you live with them? He said, no. I said, and the way he said it, he said, no. And I said, you just said that with a little emotion. He said, we're not getting along with them good right now. I said, ah. Ah, and then got under your skin. I think Mama asked you where you were last night. Where are you going to be? And he's like, yeah, and more than that. I said, we're going to have to talk about that. You willing to talk to him about that at some point? He said, yeah, at some point. But see how I'm just, if he said, well, I don't want to talk about it. It's none of your, hey, it's none of your business. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Because if he thinks me asking him that is a tough question, wait until he's been in business with me about two weeks see what I ask him. <laughs> Annette knows. Albright been asking a question for you. You know it, won't he? Albright, I'm who wants to know. What is that show? Um, curious, Inquiring Minds. I'm the inquirer. Okay. I'm the inquirer. Inquiring Minds won't know. Y'all shacking up married. How y'all do it? Y'all got, y'all married? Not married? Them kids. Them your kids? Her kids? Y'all's kids? Which is it? How'd it go? How old are they? How long y'all been married? Hmm. What they doing today? They got a job? They live at home? You support them? You give them allowance? Well, I'm just asking questions, but hang on, hang on. I probably want to know. Inquiring minds like, no, you like a magazine when I get through with you. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like stumbling through it like, oh, that looks interesting right there. Hot the almighty. <laughs> Does that make sense? I love it. I love it. Sometimes I'll be recruiting. I'll be, I can't believe I'm getting paid to do this. And people say, you ain't getting paid, but I'm going to get paid big. Because I sort, I find some good people over time. You mean you think about it? We found Paul Van Foss, right? So you didn't find him. That's right. Me and James Hill found him, along with Paul Menakino. We were all examining, looking. I said, "That looked like a winner right there." He led a little bit of a lacrosse player, but you know, I believe I think a lacrosse player could do it if he put his mind to it, as long as he ain't been hit by that ball too many times in the head. You ever been hit in the head with that ball? He said, "Yeah, that thing hurts." I said, "Get a concussion? A couple of them." I was like, hey, say, can you say a couple concussions? <laughs> Two, three. <laughs> I was like, let me. Right, right. He started laughing. Then I knew he thought that was funny. Because if he hadn't thought it was funny, I'd have said something wrong. You see what I'm saying? But we're just helping sorting through. And now Van Thoff's got a few people. Now we got this DJ that they got. You saw his name up there. You know, we see from you Alaska, but I don't know. You know Eskimos and stuff up there, you know. He'd be like, I'll sell him some ice. So we better hire him. You see what I'm saying? Um, all right, let's go to the next. This is what you got to do. I ain't taking a lot of time training you, but you, if, you, if, you, if you're not finding good people and you're wasting hey, – here's I talked to somebody the other day. He, 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 he was recruit, I was recruiting. I said, well, you, can you hire people? He said, no, I'm the sort of guy that um, when I hire people, they just waste my time. And I, I told him, I put him on mute. I said, he don't know how to sort. He's working all the dum-dums in his life and he's sucking the blood out of the marrow out of his legs and joints and stuff like that. I can't be dealing with that crap. Frustrated person dealing with the wrong people. Does that make sense? That's, you're working with the wrong people, you're frustrated. So my people ain't doing nothing. Either you ain't a motivator or you're trying to motivate a mud puddle. And a mud puddle ain't going to get up and run nowhere. It just sit there. I ain't got a geyser now. You with me? That geyser. That, and that must be run off geysers. Because he's shooting off of the mouth. He's talking cocky. he got an attitude. He's arrogant. I go, I love that, bud. I ain't got a geyser. I just can't get a mud puddle moving. They say I can't get a mark car. So there's a question I'm asking. You shouldn't be frustrated with people. You take all that energy. We call it sex transmutation, but this is a different kind. Take your energy that ain't working right here, right? If it ain't working right here, you switch your energy over here. So you want to slap the taste out of his mouth, knock him in the middle of next week, but don't do that. Just go call somebody else and show, you, show yourself how mad you are by how many times you call. Hit that phone like that right there. Dialing somebody new. Does that make sense? Me and you had that conversation this week. All right. Um, let's, let's see if we can do another one. I don't want to hit it and you hit it too. Give me, go me down one more. I want to hit it and he hits it right at the same time. Then we'll, here we go. Identify the right page. Make a tentative list of suspects who you suspect might be prospects. Suspects are people you know little about and know little about you. Prospects are people you have a legitimate need for what you're offering. 
And that's why I said, but you interested in making money? How many people are you taking care of? You see, I'm looking to see if this person's a fit. I'm literally interviewing more than I'm recruiting. You have seen me. Well, I'm telling you what. It's just, I'm just interviewing. I'm asking questions fast. I ain't got a lot of time. And I got my phone still dinging. Ding, ding, ding. I tell them, I say, you know that dinging? That's the guy I'm going to talk to when I hang up with you. <laughs> you know, if you don't get hired, you know, they go, I don't think about it. I say, hey, you ain't got time to think about it. You want to do it or not? Because I'm going to let you, I'm going to put you right back in. I'm going to take your... Your, your rear end, I don't pick you up. I don't see it. It looked like an L and a W. I'm kind of confused. And if you squirm, I'm going to put you right back in the bucket with the rest of the fish mm-hmm. in a nice, nice, nice sort of a way. Does that make sense? Because mm-hmm. I don't want them spoiled because you talk to them. You might get some, something out of them a little bit. Okay. All right. Um, prospects are people that have a – okay, here. Some of these people can't do it. People say anybody can do it. Uh, listen, anybody can do it to a certain level. Think and Grow Rich said there's certain reasons people fail. And one of them is a, a, a very limited amount of intelligence. It says that in the book, okay? A person with very, 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 very limited intelligence. Maybe they were born, some, I don't know, but some, not everybody can do it. Or if they have a terrible, terrible spouse. It's, Think and Grow Rich said you can, it gives you about 11 or 12 reasons why people are just terrible. And if I'm talking to somebody and I detect a terrible, you with me? I got to go. Does that make sense? Because other day ain't going to be able to make it. You say, you are judgmental. Mm, I'm not judgmental. I take anybody, any color, any age. Because you don't like old people like 27 years old. Mm, Hal and Ellen. They older. I love them. You mess with them, you get ready to mess with me. Does that make sense? Older people that produce are better than younger people that don't produce. Here's the difference. If you get them at 22, five years later, they're 20, 27. If you get them at, at, at 72, then they dad gum 77 when they start doing it. And you, ain't, you see what I'm saying? Just the, the package is getting ready to, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, when you're 77, you don't want to go somewhere and spend a night in your car. But you take a 27-year-old, 25-year-old, he'll, he'll go spend a night in the car, get up and work all day, get, well, get up in the morning, go into um, Gold's Gym, take a shower, get cleaned up for free. Well, it's, what's night? How much cost a month? $10 a month? $10 a month. You got a free shower, hot shave. And um, get back in your clothes and take change clothes and go and work. 77, you don't want to do all that. You just don't want to do all that. But 27, you don't even care. Back don't hurt or nothing. You know what I mean? 77, you sleep in the car and you don't be able to get out of the car. <laughs> They'll just roll you right up to a chiropractor. Okay. Use ball and chain rope to get you out of there. <laughs> all right. Um, capable. Now, now, here's something somebody told me a long time ago, about 20 years ago. He said, Andy, you either need lucky people or good people. I said, how do you tell the difference? He said, you can't tell the difference. He said, you, you, he said, I always thought you was lucky. I don't think you're all that good. I said, well, I've heard that before. You know, I don't, but it don't make no difference. Some people think I'm good. Some think I'm lucky. It don't make no difference. But you think a person's unlucky, and you say, he's talented. He's just been unlucky. Same, same to me. I'm looking for the ball in the net, the puck in the net. The, foot, the pig stand across the line, the car in the garage, the bread in the oven. You with me? I'm looking for the, does that make sense? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a point getter person, point getter observer. Make sense? And it, it, by the way, what I'm telling you is, in case of you miss, this is what you're supposed to do. <laughs> you're supposed to be like this. A lot of people are like, oh, that's how you are. I'm not how that. No, no, no. I'm saying this is how you need to be. So I'm not like that. Change. So how do you know if people change? If they change, they want to. If they don't change, they don't want to change. They're fighting you. They're fighting you. Boy told me that a long time ago. He said, you, want, you know I know a person wants to do what you say? I said, what? He said, if they do it. I said, oh. I said, what if they take your time? He said, they don't want to do it. They just fight me. I said, oh, okay. Does that make sense? So if I'm talking to a person, I start listening and see if he'll change and do what I want him to do. I start listening and see if he's, but if I can tell he's fighting, contradicting me, trying to go against me, I'll be like, and here's the way they do it. They don't, they, here's what they say. I agree with you 100%, but here's the way I think, um, I always think of it. Yeah, to hit with that bunt, huh? Yeah. yeah. And some other way they say it that makes it sound the same. I, just, I got a little twist to what you're saying, Andy. I go, I'm going to give you a twist because I'm going to swing you around like a chicken. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I ain't, I ain't listening to all that. You with me? Now, now some people misinterpret it. If a guy says, um, like cockiness and arrogance 
disagreeing with you versus they have a different philosophical standpoint. That philosophy bothers me because that makes them a philosopher. Mm -hmm. If he's arrogant telling me how it's going to be, I start thinking I can use that as a leverage. Okay. Does that make sense? I can say things like, you remember when you're talking all that trash, how is you going to do it? And you ain't sold nothing yet. Remember that? Yeah. You want to switch to my way? But you take a person who philosophically thinks differently. Then later on, they don't do anything. You shouldn't be surprised, and you certainly shouldn't challenge them because they'll just philosophize again on you. So, so the crazier arrogant, I'm more likely to work with that person than the philosopher. Does that make sense? It's huge. It's just huge if you can you can grasp it. It's, now I'm an example person. That's why I say you ought to just sit with me in my office. A lot of people say, "Can't you broadcast it?" Like, dude, you ever you ever seen me recruit? You don't need it broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too crazy. You know, I'm just crazy. You know, I go, uh, uh. You're putting this on video. Matter of fact, you got to swear on a little couple books before you come up in here. I'll right be recruiting on him, right, Mickey? I'll probably be recruiting. I ain't. It's like this. You you ain't gonna see him put no mic on Greg on Shashevsky's down when he's talking to them basketball players on the sideline. Matter of fact, you read his lips. You want to put your hands over your <laughs> TV. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, all right. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, the need for what you're offering. Poor is not a need. Does that make sense? If they're poor, that don't mean they need it. That does not mean meat. Need is when they have an ego to satisfy, when they have high dollar taste. And we used to say, to, uh, if you can find a guy with a, um, with a woman with expensive taste, with high maintenance, that's what we call them. You get a high maintenance woman, that drug will produce. You with me? Um, that's what I always worried about. My wife is very, um, very, um, huh? Low main, very low maintenance. You don't, you don't, she don't care about diamonds or, or money or, or Cadillacs. I try to buy her, I try to buy her a, a Cayenne. I try to buy her a Cadillac. She said, I want a Toyota. I said, well, if you want a Toyota, I will buy you a Toyota. <laughs> and then she said, um, well, if you, um, if you buy me a Toyota, won't you, since you save so much money, won't you buy your daughter a Toyota? I said, y'all go pick you out two Toyotas. <laughs> so one day this week, we went down there and I, we put a big row. We got two brand new Toyotas. It was, you know what I mean? It's just like, but you know, I, I don't, I don't, I have other problems. I don't have a, a, a high maintenance wife. You with me? But you got to have with a problem. What's your problem, Andy? Ah, I got this eternity thing on my mind. The more people I can help, the more difference I can make. You know what I mean? Like I got this psychological problem that needs to be fed. Does that make sense? And I like to impress my kids with Ferraris and Lamborghinis. You say something's wrong with you? No, there's, there's a ton wrong with me. <laughs> that's what you're looking for. You're looking for people got something. He got this right here. You got some mess. I'm telling you, you know, some psychological stuff. That's what you want. People that want to feed that psychological stuff. Like a perfectly right person, they ain't gonna do this thing. I'm not kidding you. Like if you're perfectly right, you can just get up and walk out. <laughs> Look like we got the right group. <laughs> you can shut the video by you perfect right. See if our numbers went down, Billy. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, key attributes. I already mentioned some of them, right? Ego, articulate, educated, believer, um, spouse is wanting to make money. If you can hear a woman in the back, you better get that job, boy. You better get you some. Whoever you are, you better hire him. He needs something new. That's a good start right there. Because you know she's going to be like that all the time, you know. I got one. I got one. I told her, I said, here's what you say to him. If you, I told her, she's big, too. I said, look, here's what you say to him. You're going to let Megan, Megan Wood, that's you. you he, you're going to let Megan Wood, you're going to let Debbie Ben beat you? Because, you know, he's big, strong. He don't have girls beat him, you know. I told her, I said, you say that to him, and then I'll work with him on, you know, getting rich and stuff like that. And she said, I got this. <laughs> I don't know if she's holding it up in her bargain, but he's selling a lot, you know. And, and I told you, you know, you got to love on him, you know, give him, you know, get him excited and fired up, you know, and be nice to him. But every once in a while, you need to mention to him, you know, just kind of lay that out. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know. All right, uh, attributes, what else? Um, uh, what do we do? A live life insurance. Create a profile of your best customers that apply that profile the world at large. Okay, who needs more life insurance? If they're alive, they're a high-level prospect. Does that make sense? 
If they don't have any insurance, you need to get downright brutal with them. If they don't have a retirement plan, you, you with me? this is identify the profile. You with me? So profile of somebody. Somebody. Here's what we say. He he opened a direct mail. He 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 wrote on a direct mail piece. He put the direct mail piece back in the envelope. You have got a prospect. He put his phone number. He put his address. That's a prospect, brother. You with me? Then when you do referrals, ERS, you go to the house and you ask questions, and if they don't have life insurance and they got kids, my God, close. You let me start asking emotional questions. You've identified them. If there's nothing there, you go over there and they ain't got a pot to pee pee in, you let me? Mm-hmm. Gotta go. You with me? Yeah. Ask some questions and then move. So it's the same recruiting is the same thing as selling. You can't recruit everybody. But if you pay $55 or $40, whatever you pay for a lead, they're already identified. That's why you go to their house. But on a prospect, you paid $3 or $1, move on. It's not, does that make sense? And he's not identified. Just because he answered an ad does not identify him as a person that wants to work. That identifies him as a person who will respond to ads. That's different than this. That's why these are so much crazier and more fanatical. Hey, boss. All right. Um, what else do I have on here? Life insurance. Draw the line on the bottom. Oh, 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 oh. The process of turning a suspect. Okay, so let's say all of y'all, all of y'all are whales, and you look like you're in good shape, and I'm going to try to jump, get you to jump out of the water and over that rope. Here's a way I identify if you are the whale that I'm going to train to work at Disney. Or Waterworld. What do you call that place? SeaWorld. Sea Here's what I do. I put a fish over here, uh-huh. and I say, the first one over here to eat this fish gets the fish. Uh-huh. And the one of you that gets over here and does it first is the one that I'm prejudiced for. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Annette, drag away. you're here. You have no idea. You're the fish. You're the one that went over to get the fish. Right. People say, how do I get people to sail? You can't get people to sail. Can you get them to come to TWC? The ones watching this show have identified themselves as being willing to jump over the line to get a fish. They're not jumping out of the water to get a fish. They're jumping over the line to get a fish. People go like, you're training me? Yeah, don't you want to be trained to be rich? People go like, I ain't going over there to eat a fish. It might be a sardine or something. I don't like sardines. I'm going to wait for a real minute to come along. All right. You see what I'm saying? You don't get them to sail, you get them to walk, jump over the line. And so, it be, have y'all heard me say this? Like, let, let me watch this. Have you heard me say this before? Who in here has not, this is jumping over the line. Who in here has not sold a policy yet? Raise your hand. Stand up, stand up, stand up. She hasn't sold a policy. See how she's slow standing up? I don't like it. Stand up fast. You see what I'm saying? Uh, have you sold a policy? See how she's talking? Stand up. You see what I'm saying? Like, I love you and everything, but if I'm making jokes, uh-uh, I say sit back down, sit down. Now, if you've got a health reason you need to sit down, I get it. If you've got a health reason you've got to sit down, I get it. But you see how I'm upset? I'm upset because she didn't stand up. She raised her hand and just said, what's your name? Ellen. I love you, Ellen, but I ain't kidding. I ain't playing. I ain't got time for that. Albright got a million things to do. I'm about 55. I'm about, six, I'm about 56. I'm coming up on 56 years old, bro. I ain't TikTok. You with me? I have a heart attack and go away from here tonight. I'll be like, shoot, I had stuff to do. Does that make sense? I got stuff to do. And then she want to argue about it. I ain't in that. Like that had something to do with it. I ain't sold one yet. I ain't sold one yet. Does that make sense? I ain't, a, I ain't discussable. I ain't, I ain't gonna talk about it. What's your name again? Ellen, you ain't quit on me yet. Have you feel good? <laughs> I see you thinking about it. She's like, this is gonna be tougher than I thought. <laughs> Who was that young man said that? Kevin. My boy Kevin Rivera, he said, this business is going to be hard. I thought, I said, Bo, you sitting over there making $12, $13 an hour. Now, he did like tile. He'd get paid like $30 an hour. I said, how hard would it be to me to learn how to do something 30 He said, it'd take a little bit. How long do you think it's going to take you to learn how to make something make four, or 500000 pounds? It's going to take you a little bit. What part, of the, what part of what I do you thought was easy? Because you done pissed me off twice right there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Talking about what I'm doing is easy. It's hard. It's easy because all you got to do is talk. But when she started arguing me like that, now watch this. Them 22-year-olds won't do that. They'll be like, 
because they scared they can get a whooping. <laughs> if you want to his children, <laughs> you can tell, right? But when they get when they get up over 27, 28, 29, 30, what well, you about 30, 30 things, 32? But what I'm saying, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They started they started to talk about it. Like I don't talk about it, bro. Does this make sense? Like that'd get me on the phone. That'd get me a God. You sound like awesome. I'm gonna email you the material. Email the material. Next. See how, see how, see how I do that? No. If I can get them going over the line, I can get them come back over the line. I can lift that line up a little bit. And next thing you know, I have him making forty thousand dollars a month. But if I can't train him to jump off a line, I ain't gonna be able to train him to do nothing else. You see what I'm saying? This guy asked me Sunday morning, Doer. I think it's your boy Doer. Doer down the line from you. He asked me. He said, "How you get these people? Teach them all the products. There's too many products." I said, that's not your job. Your job is to get them on the TWC. Your job is to get them listening to the product call. Your job is to get them into training. You can't stop. You can't, the one that jumps over the line like this, jumps over the line like this, jumps over the line like this, that joker will go over a rope 20 foot outside of the water. He'll be like, watch this, watch this, y'all. He'd be like getting wound up, round and round and round, round, and then come up out of that water, woo-hoo, shake his tail on the way out. Ha <laughs> ha! Boom, go down, eat a fish. Eat a fish. And the fans go wild. Woo! Woo! And Will be like, that's right. He'd be looking at his girlfriend. You see that? You see all them people clapping for daddy coming home? Does that make sense? Your job is to get them across this line and back and forth and keep raising that line. Does that make sense? The guys that I got making a million, I'm trying to get them to go to two. Once I get to get them two, I'm trying to get them to three. I should hire a rope. Does that make sense? But I can't get them. If I can't get you to make 20 phone calls, I can't get you to make 300. Does that make sense? Right. I can't get you to go in a house and say something crazy. I said, say this when you go in a house. Well, I don't say something. Well, you better say something. Does that make sense? All right. I begin early. Have you heard me say this? They'll be sitting down. Like, Who said sit down? Who said sit down? So I'm training them that when I say something, that means keep doing it. Does that make sense? I'm training them that we read books every night, 15 minutes. We're training them that we listen to audios. So I'll take a picture of audio, but what they do is they get good. You get the rope up about right here, and they start, I'm good, I'm good. You go under the rope. You'd be like, ah. see, he's not going to ever make the big show. Does that make sense? He's not going to make the big time. He's just going to make the little time. You keep him in the pools over there with the little kid. You don't bring him out to the big pool. Does that make sense? So if they not, and, and see, I'm training right now. I'm training them to be trainable by keeping it simple. All right, we got to, all right, y'all grab a seat. Watch this, grab a seat. See? Does that make sense? Like, yeah, that's easy. That's the easy one. But we're going to get harder and harder and harder for you to be able to copy it. Does that make sense? It's going to get harder than that. If that was tough, you wait until what's coming next. You know what I mean? Like, shave to the right. Shave to the left. You know? You're Cha cha, real good. <laughs> we start to cha cha in here. Now you ask her to do cha cha, you see what she say. <laughs> All right, I got to go quite crazy. Boom, boom. Let's move to the next one. Um, engaging the right people. Let's do this. Get to an appointment, a dialogue with these people. Get to an appointment for a dialogue with these people. We call that bam fam. So when I talk to a person, I always book another appointment. So when you talk to a person, you sold them a policy, say, listen, here's what you say to them. Now, when I bring you policy, I got something cute I want to show you. It is how to increase your retirement by 33%. So how do I do that? You do an IUL quote for 500 a month. And when you bring a policy back, show them 500 a month IUL and show them. I, I ain't got time to show you how that works. But we can show you how to increase their retirement. All you do is you allocate some money that was going to go over here and get taxed. You allocate it to a non-tax vehicle. So they're not taxed, so they save 33% and they get more retirement. And they got a life insurance the whole way. Every policy, you should go back and show them 500 a month, unless you know you got $75 and they ain't got 10 more cents, you ain't gonna go back. But if you know they got more money, you take a $500 a month proposal. But first you gotta act permission. That's called bam fam, book a meeting from a meeting. So if you notice, I'm always, and if I don't do it, my staff does say, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? What's the guy with the glasses on, the red, white, and blue shirt right there behind you, Mickey? What's, what's your name? Huh? Kale, where'd you drive down here from? When did I talk to you the first time ever? Uh, and and what I do right off the bat? 
ask you to drive down here for two hours. Now, I looked at Mickey, and I said, why didn't you ask him to drive down here? Mickey said, I don't know. I said, well, next time I ask him to drive down here, maybe two or three hours, you ask him to drive down here. If he said no, that'd been fine, but he'd move to the back of the line. See, I got another person to talk to, but now he's moved to the front of the line. See, what I'm doing, I'm rewarding him for stepping over the line. Does that make sense? So what you reward him with? Good job. Does that make sense? Now, eventually, I'm rewarding with $10,000 bonuses. <laughs> but right now, he's just stepping across the line. You don't get paid for that. You want to get a little minnow. You know what I mean? Jerk jump over that rope. We give him a salmon or something. You know, we give him something big, you know? Big Mac something, you know? <laughs> All right. Um, Kale, did I talk to you about how we could rich, get rich? Did I talk to you? We can get rich. Front row seats. Traveling all over the world. Did I talk to you about Thailand? All expense paid trip to Thailand. This is what we're talking about. Benefits. Living benefits if you're selling. A lot, a lot of this is about building and not, not so much producing. But living benefits. Make sure you tell them about the benefits. All right. Um, show interest in them. What do you expect? Um, show interest in them. I think this joker can kill it. I think you can kill it. I know this couple can kill it. I know this joker can kill this thing. I know he's got way more than he's putting in. That's an expectation. Tell them what they can get and set expectations. Believe in people. You want to encourage them. Um, you got a lot of family you got to take care of? You got any bills? Are you a high maintenance? You like clothes? You can, when people give you hints whether they want money or not, and you just got to watch it. That's why in person I can tell a whole lot more about you because I can take out your shoes and belt and you, you just see what you want. You know what I mean? And it's, it's a telltale factor. People that want more, get more. People don't want it, it's hard, it's hard for you to put what in them God left out. We say that. If it ain't in them, it's hard to get it out of them. You with me? If it ain't even down in the well, the bucket ain't going to help. You, you, uh, what they say is what comes up in the bucket went down in the well. So whatever's in them, we can get it out. That makes sense? And, and people can change. I always say that. People can change, but I just ain't got time to wait for change. I'm looking for people that ready to change. You with me? Does that make sense? I'm looking for them already ready. I'm not looking for the growing thing. Don't get me wrong. I take all the marinators, we call it the room for the comfortable. The comfort room. Stay over here in your comfort zone. I, I, try, not, I try not to be mean to them. Try not to. But sometimes they get a catch, a glancing blow where I'm talking trash to my fighters and then they over there and they, they overheard me. I said, I'm not talking about you. You're in a room for comfortable people. Close the door. Get another snack. Get a donut. Get some coffee. Something. <laughs> you with me? I don't mean for them to hear it. You know what I mean? But sometimes you get a glancing blow. But you try to be nice to them because you never know when I'm going to like, I'm in there, a bunch of losers. I'm getting ready to get out of here. And they come over here. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, hung by the tongue. If I can get them to say, I want to make a million dollars. I, I, I told this, I called this other boy, I think it's November. I want to say his name because he's killing it. But I called him. I said, Do you remember when I first met you? Do you remember that conversation? You told me this and you told me that. He said, I did. I said, did you mean it? Are you a truth teller or are you a liar? And I just kept talking to him, talking to him about that first conversation. That joke is, he's killing it. Hung by the tongue. Now, if I'd have been the one to recruit him, I'd have been on him all along. But I ain't seen him in a while. He's down in the group. I'd have been on him all the time. But the other guy, I don't know if the other guy just didn't expect anything out of him or didn't remind him. But I remember that conversation. He was hung by the tongue. And I hunged him again. You know what I'm saying? I was getting ready to string him up, so I was getting ready to do, because there's so much talent wasted. Y'all know that burns my butt, right? A flame about that high, and talent that ain't used, unused potential, noise and you know what out of me. All right, let's go to the next one. Connect as fast as possible. If y'all watch me, I will break down barriers of race, age, religion, uh, marriage, divorce, children, no children, can't have kids. As quick as I can get through to people, I connect as fast as I can on some kind of level. It's not typically sports. You with me? It's something personal that people get mad when to fight about. People act like they fight about a basketball game, but that ain't unless they're drunk at the game. Other than that, they ain't going to fight you about no game. But they'll fight you about the chid when it's good and sober, especially a mama bear. You with me? And daddies get upset about stuff too. So the, uh, something personal. Um, Tim said, I mean, Jeff says that this is an interesting point. I say things like, oh. No, hey, all right, that crazy, isn't it? Oh, wow, that's scary. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I ain't never heard that. Whew, you with me? I'm, I'll keep them going, all right? He does it, this is a loop, by the way. 
This is not a one, two, three. This is what you do. You, you validate, you empathize, and you understand. Um, and then you go back and find something else about them, and it, something else. Like, I'll go down the kid route. I'll go down the marriage route. A woman say to me, yeah, I divorced. That guy was beating me up. I had it with him. I said, you put that sucker in jail? I thought about it. I said, why didn't you? I said, I just didn't have time to think about him. I was moving on my life. I said, well, if that joker ever comes back, you call me. I'm going to get me and Terry Edwards be down there. You with me? Just, I'm all over that. And then I said, now, you got any kids? Did you have any kids from that relationship? Yeah, I did. Good kid. How old is he? What's he doing now? Is he in good health? I always say that. Is he in good health? Because if he ain't good health, I know people. I don't say that to them. But if they say, well, guess what? He's dealing with this. I said, my friend Adam Katz, little boy, had that same thing right there. I'm going to get him to give you a buzz and tell you his experience, how long has yours had it, his how long. I try to help him. You with me? And then I move on to something else. Tell him about the finances. How we looking? How's your husband? He got a job. Has he got a job? Did he get promoted? Has he got boss paying him enough? Does he like it there? And I'm just, so I'm going around in circles. You with me? I'm just validating, empathizing, and understanding. And, and I'm painting them in a picture. I'm painting them down a tube. I'm painting them down a funnel to where they become rich. Does that make sense? I call it tricking them in to get rich. All right. Um, as a matter of fact, I drew it out. I drew it right there. And, and hey, well, some people it goes whoop, straight down, and other people it goes slow, slow. But if they're ready, I get them going right in. Does that make sense? I won't, I'm looking for ones that just go boom, and they're ready. This is this is the end where they pop out and they start producing. I'm taking them down a funnel. You with me? Does this make sense? But sometimes I just step them right in. I just this one guy I got down in Florida. He's a surgeon. Already had his license. I said, "You doing this for entertainment purposes? You're a surgeon?" He said, "No, I did some stupid stuff." I said, "You done lost it all." He said, "Yeah." I said, "We need to get you going right now. <laughs> we need to get you going right now." I said, we need, "And I said, here's what we're gonna do." Da 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 da. da. If he ain't wrote a policy by next week, something wrong. I told him. I said, "I said if you can't help, if you can't sell, this older guy, you know, he's a retired surgeon." I said, "If you can't sell, I get you a job at Wendy's or something." <laughs> I said, I get your job at Chick-fil-A, you get off on Sundays. He was laughing like crazy. He said, you crazy. I said, you laughed as much as any other interviews you had. He said, you're the craziest one I talked to. I said, I'm the one you make most money with, too. Let's get him a contract. We contracted him about an hour later. Anybody got an update on my boy? 2.15 day. Did you tell him to get on the show? Have you texted him to see if he's on the show? See what I'm saying? I want to see if that joker's stepping across the line, because I ain't worried about him if he can't step across the line, because he ain't got nothing else to do. He's retired. Unless he's at the doctor or something. That's what they do when they retire. They go to the doctor. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know this. When you got a final expense leave, you don't ask them if they're going to be home. You ask them if they're going to go to the doctor. If they ain't going to the doctor, they're going to be at home. Does that make sense? You just tell them what time you're coming over there. You going to be at the doctor tomorrow? No, I'll be over there by 9. Just move it along. Straight down the line, you know. And if they say, whoa, 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 I got an active life. You say, I come over there about 10. Then you know, you know. All right, next. No, I think that's it. All right. This help a little bit? Yeah. Jeff Bright, you got three minutes. Come up here. Or you got four, actually. I want to give y'all a taste of something right here. Um, where's the white sheets go, boss? Um, the bottom, the blue. Which one right here? Yeah. yeah, that's perfect. All right. You want to draw or talk? He wants to give y'all a prelim for next. Does that help y'all? Yeah. Yeah. That help? That's, a, that's a big deal right there. So, um, Next TWC, next Wednesday, just kind of give you a preview, because this is like a two-part thing. This was entitled Questions to Help You Engage. The next week is Questions to Win. So we're moving to another phase of this, right? So that we stopped at a point where you've got, you've got their interest, you pick their interest, now what are you going to do? And, and, and the books that we're reading tells you you've got to sell them on the why. Okay, we have a why. So our why is, um, and that's what I wanted to introduce you to, our why is <clears throat> pie. So next week, when Andy starts off his conversations, his slides are going. His first slide is going to talk about vision, because you have to distinguish between a vision and a mission. And a lot of people don't know this, and he's going to talk about it in detail. But there's a difference between a mission and a vision. A mission is timeless; it never ends. Our mission, our mission, and I didn't put our mission up here. This is this is our vision. Our why is our vision. Our mission is day duplicate associate edify all right it's also 
make a difference, make money, have fun, th those three things. Those, that's, those are timeless. They have no end. There's no end to the making money. There's no end to making a difference. That's good news. There's no, yeah, that's all good news. And then also the other one, which is sell, uh, build, and recruit, there's no end to that. That's just something you do. It's not something you question every day. You just get up and do it. That's the mission part. The vision that comes before that is, has an end. It has a destination. And a lot of people don't understand that pie is not endless. It's a destination. So the destination comes first. You sell them on the destination, and then you teach them the how, which is the mission. So I want you to see that distinction. So if you understand this, for example, eternity, a lot of people don't understand there's pre-eternity and post-eternity. And in between is what? Death. You're living the pre-eternity right now. You're going to die. That's right. <laughs> You're going to die. That's a fact. And then, you're, hopefully, if you believe like I believe, then the post-eternity is everlasting life, right? Uh -huh. But there's a pre. And you need to do a good job in that pre so you'll have that post. <laughs> and the pre is important. But a lot of people don't, people, people don't get that. They don't understand that, hey, we're being judged by that. And I, and I, look, I got something. I, maybe we got time at the end. Or Andy can read this. But post, I mean, we could go into details about this. But post, I mean, excuse me, pie, starting off with prosperity. Look at this. It's a question about do you want to be rich or do you want to be wealthy? See, rich people worry about a salary. Wealthy people worry about their net worth. <clears throat> I looked up the top 1% in this country, which are 19 million people in this country that are in the top 1% of making money, being rich and wealthy. The salary of the lowest person in the 1% is $430,000. The highest is $1.5 billion. That's a big gap, but that makes up the 1%. But that's not what they're concerned about. That person makes $1.5 billion a year. Guess what their worth is? That's how rich he is based on his salary. His worth is $108 billion. See the difference? So you got to make a decision. You just want to be rich or do you want to be wealthy? Inspiration is about eternal versus in in internal. Look, I love material things like everybody else does in this room. And, I, and look, there, I have destinations that I want to reach. Places I want to go, things I want to buy. Those are, those are, they, they're not timeless. They're things I want to achieve. But most important from the movie City, City Slickers, <laughs> the internal part of, of inspiration is one thing. And everybody in this room, that one thing's different. It's whatever you think makes you happy. But I'm going to tell you something, my friends. You're never going to be happy until you realize what makes you happy. you got to figure that out. That's the one thing you need to figure out. But we wanted to end today. What, is, people, what most people think about, what do I not like and who to blame? They don't think about what I want and how to get it. What I want make me happy. <coughs> yeah, some of them laughing because I don't know I told them. Here's the way Albright think. It's a very simple. It's a very simple. Hey, can you, you want to read this? Yeah. Read, hey, this is a good way to end on how to, how to live your life before death. You want me to read it. You don't want me to sing it, I promise. Okay. But if it was playing, I would be screaming it. We can sing it together right now, but I don't think it's a good idea. I went skydiving. I went Rocky Mountain climbing. I went 2.7 seconds on a bull named Fu Pan Chi. <laughs> I loved deeper. I spoke sweeter. I gave forgiveness I'd been denying. <laughs> and he said, someday. I hope you get the chance to live like you were dying. Like tomorrow was a gift and you've got eternity to think about. What you do with it, what could you do with it? What did I do with it? What would you do with that? That's how we have to live each day if you're going to live what we call pie. Come with me to Toronto. Come with me to Thailand. We'll ride elephants together. We'll be in sweets at baseball games. We'll eat popcorn until we throw up. <laughs> hey, who all is going with us to, to Alaskan Cruise? Who's Alaskan Cruise? Y'all stand up. 
turn around and look at this camera and wave it. We'll see y'all in Alaska, if not before, and it's going to be fun. Kyle in next. We love y'all. Thanks for tuning in to the TWC, buddy. We love you. Catch you next week. It'll be awesome.